Randy for Thunder Horse Descendant. I'm here today with project number five. Project number five from August Bargain Bead Box. We're still working on August. But here we are working on August. And in August, we're going to be using this little gem. Okay. I'm super excited about that. This is a knotted necklace using all of the Howlite components. Um, well, the star space or the star highlight components and these guy, this guy. So, yeah, super excited. <laughs> I think it's going to turn out great. I'm thinking we're going to do a shorter necklace. Originally in my plan video, I had said this would be like a longer one, but then I would have to add beads and all this that. So I think we'll just make it a shorter one and utilize the toggle. So if you've never made a shorter knotted necklace... Come along for the ride. Check, check, check it out. But I am super excited for this guy. So without further ado, let me just premise this video by saying we are a working studio. We are in here doing work, shipping uh, bead component orders and uh, shipping handmade jewelry orders and all that good business. So if you hear some commotion, don't worry. It's just my fabulous, spectacular, amazing uh, assistant Shannon in there doing doing packaging of orders. Uh, we also have pets. We have lots of pets. We have a hundred pound coon hound run around here. The internet refers to him as Jakey Toes. And uh, we have a silly Lily, who she just is silly. And then we have Mr. Bunsen, who, you know, likes to get involved with the, with the beating business. He likes to be involved. So, you just never know. Anyways, let's get on into the video and get this party started. All right, here we are, party people. So let me show you what we are going to be using from Bargain Bead Box and then what we will be adding. So what we're going to be using is, of course, the Howlite Pendant. So good. This is what mine looks like. Right? It's got some nice veining on it. I think I like this. I think I like this side better. But yeah, super good. So that's what my pendant looks like. I'm sure they're all a little different. And then I have taken the liberty of splitting these. Um, so these were the little metal, um, just the little metal gun component, gun, gun metal components. I've split them evenly into these two dishes along with the crystals. Those pear, kind of pear shaped crystals. The Howlite English cut or star cut, whatever you call them, English cut, star cut, um, stones. And then, of course, our wooden spacers. Okay, so I saw these components and I was like, mm, perfect for a knotting project. <laughs> so that's those. Now let me show you what we are going to add. I'm going to be using Ceylon string for my knotting. So I pretty much use Ceylon for all of my knotting. Um, not exclusively, but I, it's one of my favorite mediums to use. So um, this we actually get from Taylor's Falls. And if you are in need of some colors, we do have some listed on Thunder Horse Descendant. On the website, under stringing material, we have a bunch of different ones. So FYI, they're like $5.75 for this roll. Um, I am going to be busting into the green. To be honest with you, I don't know if I've used this one yet. It doesn't look like I have. So I thought that I thought this would go perfectly with the little green pear crystal beads. <clears throat> so we're going to be adding that. I have also gotten out just this tube of Toho size eight seed beads, just in case we need them. And I got them in this uh, kind of tealish color. And I did that because of these guys. I don't know if we will actually use these or if we will need them, but if we do, we have some. So these are size eight. You could use any color you wanted. These don't necessarily match my string, but they're not supposed to. 
So, anyway, just in case. These are like just in cases. So, we got those toe holes in the eights. We are also going to be using, utilizing the tweezer. So, this tweezer is, um, we have these available on Thunder Horse Ascendant. They are Beadsmith Diamond Tweezers, fine tip. Okay, this is the black one. Um, we also have it in silver, but it's basically the same tweezer. They're like $3. Highly recommend. <laughs> they got little grippies down here and a super fine point, right, which is important. And then we're going to be using some Loctite Super Glue. <clears throat> so many of you have seen me do this before. If you haven't, I'm just going to walk us through the process of what we're going to do. Um, oh. Also, I forgot to mention we have our toggle clasp in here. So we have our toggle clasp. So this is all we're going to use. We're not going to use anything else. We're not going to use any other tools minus the scissor. Um, we're not going to use any other findings. If you like to use findings, um, you go ahead and do that. Is this a new one? This looks like a new one. It's not got been twisted yet. What we are going to need is some of our strings. So I'm going to get a um, a wings, wingspan, okay? So that is like the length of both of my arms. I know you can't see me, but it is a wingspan. Okay, and that's probably gonna be more than enough for this necklace, but I feel a little insecure about it, so I'm gonna do a little bit more. <laughs> I'd rather have too much than not enough. <clears throat> so we've got one wingspan and a little bit more, right, of the string. So now, what we're going to do, all we're going to do is we're going to just marry the ends up here. Okay, and before I start making needles or anything, we're first going to go ahead and put on our pendant. Now, when I split, when I split up my beads, I had these two little odd men out. So I think I will go ahead and utilize them if I can <clears throat> in the pendant situation. We shall see. So we're just going to marry up the ends and we're going to come down. Now you could tie this on any way you see fit. It's completely up to you. Look, I've already got a knot in mine. Of course. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a lark's head knot. So I'm going to take that loop through there. And then I'm going to bring these tails through the loop to create a lark's head knot. Let's see how that looks. Hmm, mine does have this little pointy part on it. It's fine. Okay. And then I'm going to attempt to see if these will both fit through this wooden spacer. I might have to make the hole in the wooden spacer a little bigger, but we shall see if they will both fit in there with no glue on them. Oh, looks like they will. Smash it. Okay, bring that down. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to make a knot on top of this spacer just to hold it in place. I mean, we could, oh, let me see if we could put this. I don't know that this little guy is going to fit on there. Let me see. Maybe he will. It's quite small. Oh, he is going to fit. Okay, great. Well, we'll put him on there too. Perfect. Now I'm going to tie my knot. So here's the thing. Since I have this lark side knot in there, and that's really all that it's doing, I do want it, since mine has this kind of pokey, little pokey part, I want it to be kind of loose here because I don't want it to be so tight that it's just like 
you know, going to rub on the string and everything. Eventually it's going to break. So I want it to be kind of loose. So we're going to tie our first knot and we're going to use both strings to do that. If you have not been here before, um, I'm going to just show you the knot. It's very easy. We're going to take both strings. We're going to treat it as though it's one string. And we're going to take these two fingers. We're going to wrap the string around those two fingers. You can do three if you want to. Until you have this. So you basically just have a loop. You're then going to stick it, the tails, in between these two fingers here by taking both of the tails and bringing them around. Okay, that's once. We're going to do the same thing through the same two fingers here twice. Okay, so this is what it should look like. <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tweezer. Take our finger out of there. And you're going to see you have this loop. You're going to stick your tweezer into the loop. Okay, like this. And we're going to grab a hold of what we're going to call the base string. This is the base string. You can see that. And we're going to we're going to grab where we want the knot to be. So you're going to gauge that, how much space you want to leave there for this little guy. So we want it to be kind of tight, but not really. So I'm going to go a little bit above the bead here. And then I'm going to grab hold of these two. Now, when you're pulling, you want to pull these tails straight up. Okay. And you want to make sure that your loop is on the tweezer, not over here, not coming down on the bead, on the tweezer, because this is what's going to help to cinch up all of that thread. Okay, so now we have this, and all you're going to do, once you have it tight, you want it to be tight down there, is you're going to remove the tweezer, and then you're going to take the tweezer on top of the knot, and you're going to get on top of the knot and you're going to put pressure and you're going to pull that knot down into place. I slipped off mine. That's fine. It went to where it's supposed to go because I wanted this to be able to move. So I left length for it. Right? So that's perfectly fine. That is what I want. And so now that I have this, we can go ahead and create the needles to make it easier for the rest of the project. So that's basically it, guys. That's basically the knot, but I will I will show it to you again once we're going with one string. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a little piece of leftover plastic, something, a baggie, uh, you know, something that had plastic, some kind of packaging. You're going to pull a little dab glue on there. You're going to take one side, one tail end, and you're just going to create a knot with the, or a, a knot. You're going to create a needle with this by just putting this in there into the glue and running it through like this. You're going to want to do it at least twice. Okay. So you can see it's already stiffening up, but I want it to dry. So I'm going to put it over here where I can dry. I'm going to load up the other side for the other tail. Easy peasy lemon squeaky. Same thing, same thing. You want to go at least twice. Now you can make these as long or as short as you want, doesn't really matter. And let those dry up. Once you're done with this, you can go ahead and just discard it. I gotta have a little zip of coffee. Okay. While we're waiting for those to dry, we're going to start thinking about <clears throat> our pattern here. So in essence, I kind of want to do, I know for sure I want to have, I'm going to move this out of the way. I know for sure I want to have these guys down here towards the front. I don't want them scattered throughout the necklace because I almost want to do kind of a color blocking situation with this but not entirely 
Um, so I do know that I want these more down towards the front of the necklace. So we're probably going to start with those um, and these guys here. So I'm actually just going to dump these out. So now again, these are just for one side of the necklace. Um, we also have these and these guys here. So these are all the beads that we have to utilize for this side. Now, if I need these, I don't know that I will, but if I do, I'm just going to dump out a few over here so they're ready to rock if I need them. Okay. All right. So now, let's see if this is dry. It should be. Feels dry. So now we're going to take our flush cutter and we're just going to cut this at the end of this at an angle to make it a little easier to get the beads on. You can see it's pokey. And to come out of this knot, let me zoom you in a little more. To come out of this knot right here, I am going to want to put on a few little beads because this has to V out and I don't want things knocking into each other. So I am going to put on one of these gunmetal beads. And I'm going to bring that down. And I'm going to tie the knot. Okay. So again, this is the same knot, basically, except for we're doing it with one string. So we're going to go around, come in between these two fingers, one time, two times, Get the tweezer, go through the loop, get a hold of the base string. Okay, now these ones I do want to be tight. So I'm going to get right up there. You guys can see this. I'm going to get right up there by the beat. Okay. So then I'm going to pull this straight up until it gets tight. And then I'm going to get my tweezer out of there and I'm going to grab a hold above the knot and I'm going to pull that knot down into place. Then what you're going to do is you kind of push your bead forward into the knot that you just created to lock it in. Okay. We're going to do it again with another small bead. Okay. Go around through these two fingers here once, twice, get the tweezer, in through the loop, grab a hold of the base string. Okay, when you're grabbing with your tweezer, you want to grab down towards the point. Okay, you're going to want it to be tight, so you're going to get a hold of that tail. Again, make sure your loop is on the tweezer. Pull it tight. You can even push it down with your thumbnail if you have to. And then grab a hold. And pull that down into place. I do that every time. But I'm serious about my about my nodding. <laughs> now I flung beads everywhere. Hold on a second. Okay. And then push that bead up towards the knot you just created and it should be tight. So I got two on there. That should be good. Now I'm going to start on uh, my first Howlite bead. Okay. So the first thing you want to check when you're adding a new bead is, is this bead going to go over the top of this knot that I have? And it looks like it possibly could. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I am going to put on a metal bead. First. Then my Howlite bead. Then a metal bead. So, in essence, we know that these metal beads, that they're not going over the knot. Okay. So, there is that situation. So, you should have on three beads. 
and we're going to tie the knot. One, two, grab a hold of it, tighten it up. push that into the knot, and there we go. So we're well on our way. So now, um, I'm just kind of making up my pattern as I go along. There's really no rhyme or reason to my pattern. So I think I will do a wooden spacer. A howlite, a wooden spacer. Cute. Now I tie a knot. And now I'm going to do a metal bead. Oh, metal beads are slippery today. A metal bead and one of these little pear guys. So the question is, is which way do I want my pear guys to go? And honestly, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go one this way and I'm going to put on another and I'm going to go back to back like this kind of I don't know what you would call that I would call it butts <laughs> but I don't know if you can do that on YouTube um, so putting them back to back so I get this kind of little cute little like teardrop design I like that so do the knot one two get the tweezer bring it in through the loop, get a hold of the base cord. Now I kind of hold mine up like this because you want gravity to be involved because you don't want to be holding it down and then realize that you tied your knot with too much slack in it, okay? So I always kind of hold it up to make sure that I am getting all of the slack out of the string. Okay, so there's that guy. Now directly on top of this, I think I will, I think I'll do this again, just backwards. So I will go with the spacer, then the halite, the spacer, and tie it out. One. Okay, I'm going a little faster now. Okay. Now I'll do this one. So this one has the little metal spacer and the howlite bead. Okay, I've only got one highlight bead left, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go ahead with the metal spacer and then this unit again.
Okay, if your if your little needle is getting kind of frazzled up, you can just go ahead and give her another little cut. Makes it quite easy. We're tying knot here. So now I have one of these guys left and one of these guys left. So I start making a few decisions here about how I'm going to proceed with my pattern. I think what's going to end up happening is I am going to go ahead and put these on more in the front and then do just kind of the wood spacers in the back. But I can get away with doing one of these units here with the wood spacer and the halolite and then doing a knot one two So another option would be is if you wanted to have earrings for this, you could save this out because there's only one, right? So maybe we do that because why not? So I'm going to go ahead and put that guy to the side. And then from here on out, we're going to do these, um, just these little wooden guys. So I'm going to do the gunmetal the wood gunmetal and you wouldn't have to put those in there but I think they're going to look kind of cute right and the knot one two So that is how I'm going to do the rest until I reach my desired length. So I'll do one more with you. Gunmetal. Spacer. Gunmetal. So you can kind of see how it's going to look. I think that's going to be cute up around the neck. So let's take a look at how long this currently is. So it's currently about six and a half inches. And if we're going to do about an 18 inches, 18, actually, I think I'll make mine about 20 inches. That way it could go, um, yeah, I think I'll do about 20 inches. So we're going to need about one, two, three and a half more inches of beading or at least three inches more of beading. So I'm going to do that with these and I'll be right back. All right, guys, here we are with the beading. It is 19 and a half inches. Uh, 19 and a half inches now I was going to use the toggle for this but I do have an old faithful clasp and I am going to go ahead and use that just because I feel it's gunmetal and matches I have it it's just I like it better <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and use that 
but you can use the toggle if you want to. Um, so we are going to tie on and finish up this part of the necklace. So all we're going to do here is we are going to put on, and this is just how I do it. You don't have to do it this way. Um, we're going to go ahead and put on our female end of the clasp, whatever yours is. And I'm first going to just tie a knot in this clasp. Okay. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit, but I want to leave a little bit of space. So that I can kind of macrame it in. Okay, so there's one. And then I'm going to go ahead and tie another knot. One, two. This is the same knot you've been doing. Okay. And that one is going to fall right underneath it. And now we're basically going to do the carousel knot, which is the same thing except for you only go through one time. You do not go through twice. Nope. You can if you want to. Uh, that knot is going to fall right under the others. We're going to go again. Okay. Almost like basically a half hitch knot for the most part. Just letting them build. And this is just for decoration, really. Okay, so I think I am down here at the bead now. Looks like it. So now I'm down here at the bead. So if you can see, all it does is just kind of create like a cute little thing with the string. Uh, if you have another way you want to finish, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of the Loctite. So I want to make sure that I am hitting right where the string is coming out with just a little bit of glue. And then I'm also going to put a little dab here on these knots. Not too much. You don't want it to get super stiff. But I'm just putting a little bit on there to help keep them together. And then I'm just going to let that dry. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. We won't worry about that until we're done with the other side. So put it off over there to the side. Because we're now going to work on this side. So um, these were the spacers that I had left. I'm just going to put those over here. Okay, so I'm going to do the same pattern on this side. Um, when I'm done, I will come back. We'll put on the other half of our clasp. And then this necklace is ready to rock and roll. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Here we are. I got the other side done. Let me just get all this business out of the way. I am very happy with it. Here's what we ended up with. I have to put on the other side and again, um, the other side of the ball and socket clasp. Again, if you need a ball and socket clasp, we do have those available on Thunder Horse Ascendant. I think they're like, I don't know, two, three bucks. Highly recommend, especially for this weight. So, um, just going to do the same way as we did the other. Put him on there and tie your knot just as you normally would do it. Go through once, go through twice, and then when you're when you're bringing it down here, this is where you kinda gotta maneuver a little bit because you don't wanna tie it too far away, right? So we just kinda go, okay, is that good? That looks good. Okay, and then you're gonna tie it again for a second time. Zoom in a little bit. So we're going to go again. And one, two. 
Now this knot is just going to fall right underneath. You can see. Okay. Just kind of push it in with your finger there. And then now you've secured your dot. And we're just going to do the carousel. So you just go around like you normally would, but you only go through once. You don't go through twice. It's the same knot, just going around one time. And these are all going to fall right in line with each other as long as you don't have your beads in here. These have to be out of the way so that it's just going around the string. Right? And you just do a couple until you get down to the bead. And that's pretty good. About as far as we're going to get. So we're going to hit this with the super glue the same way we did the other one. And all we're going to do is we're just going to make sure we put a dab of glue right here where the string is coming out. Okay, just a little dab. And then we're going to put a little bit on the knots that we put in just to give it a little extra. We're going to let that dry up. I just moved it off my mat so that it doesn't glue itself to the mat. And then, over here, we're going to go ahead and cut this off. So now, since we put the glue, since we put the glue right here where the string is coming out, we should be able to cut right up flush to that string. You want to be a little careful not to cut anything you shouldn't be cutting. Right? And there you go. If you then wanted to, after you cut it, if you wanted to burn it with your... Um, thread zapper or put another little piece of glue on it. You do whatever you think is best. Okay. This one. Same thing. All right. This one might not be completely dry yet. Okay. So that is what the... This is what the ball and socket is going to look like. And let me zoom you out. Oh, that's in. It's always in. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> with this camera. I always push zoom in. I don't know why. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So I did not end up using... Um, I did not end up using those guys. Um, and I did end up having two little beads left for earrings. So uh, I'm not going to make the earrings on here, but I would probably just use those to whip up a quick pair of earrings for these. Alrighty. And so this is what our necklace looked like. I think it turned out really good. I like the pattern. Um, I love that it's short. We can go ahead and um, see all of the beads this way. They're nicely spread out. I like this unit here, the way that it doubles up. It's really cute. And then this also has enough, you know, space to move around, but it's going to be tight as well because of the way that we fastened it in there. So I really do like that. So it's super cute. Um, this is 20 inches long, so it could it could be considered um, unisex. It does have a little bit of sparkle in it, but you know, hey, I know a couple guys will like a little sparkle. So there you go. Spe spectacular. I think that is super smashing. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. If you are, please let me know down in the comments. Please visit um, www.thunderhorse-descendant.com. That is our bead store. We have handmade jewelry over there. This will be going up over there. Join us on Facebook and come be a part of our group. If you're looking for a place to hang out, we would love to have and support you. And yeah, that's what we got going on. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.